So this is it. First full system test. I'm headed to a local campground. I've got everything packed in here, uh, minus a few things that I'll be taking with me on the final trip, but I really need to check out the full electrical system, get everything plugged in, get my cables cut to length and all the connectors put on. So I'm going to go set up the array at a campsite, check everything out. It's kind of cloudy. I don't really expect to get, get much power, um, but I just need to make sure everything works. So right now I'm at a supercharger, getting a little bit of extra juice. Um, I will supercharge on my way out. But once I leave New York, then that's it. I'm cutting myself off. No more superchargers. So I got a chance to lay out the panels. This is one of four strings and putting the tent pole structures in the panels was actually not as bad as I thought. It went pretty smooth. So again, this is eight down and eight back, 16 total, all connected in series. And you can see here the tent pole is just going real nice and quick. And I'm not staking them here or anything. I'm just going to set it up. And I'll kind of play it by ear. If it looks windy or I'll check the weather, I might stake it. But if I don't have to, I might just leave it like this. And the grass, they kind of stay pretty secure. And it doesn't take nearly as long as I thought it was going to take. Okay, so I'm still testing. I'm getting this setup done. Um, it looks really cool. It's so cloudy, I'm not getting much power. I think ideally the panel should be at about a 42 degree angle and they're at maybe 45-ish right now. I just checked with my phone, but they're all a little different because they're on different parts of the slope and I can always adjust it, but this is really just a, a test. It doesn't hardly matter. It's so cloudy. But yeah, it looks really good. Just got uh, a bunch more to go. Okay, now I gotta show you these connectors. They're made by TE Connectivity. And when I worked for General Motors, this company made a lot of the connectors inside of transmissions. So they're rated, or they know how to design at least connectors for extreme temperatures and extreme environments. So I'm gonna show you how this works. You don't need any special tools. Simply take your, your PV wire and you cut it. There's no stripping involved, although I did find it's a little best if you make sure this tip is a little straight and then there's a line here put the wire to the line and that's the proper length so I'll move my hand back and then you insert it to that length so right to where my finger was like that and then crimp it like that and you're done that's it that's all there is to it. Look at this connector. See that? Gets nice and flush there, and you're done. It's called an IDC connector, uh, insulation displacement connection, or connector. And what it does is when you crimp it down, it actually splices through the insulation and gets a really good connection to the wire, and it secures it in place. So now you're completely sealed up, you're ready to go. No special tools, all you need is a wire cutter. Really cool stuff. Solar Lock 2.0, and I'll show you the part numbers here. So you can pause it there. There's a part number, Solar Lock 2.0 positive connection, and Solar Lock 2.0 negative connections. All right, well, I'm gonna have to call it quits kind of early today. I got it kind of set up. It looks pretty cool. Uh, one is just laying flat. One is up on the stands, and this is just two of four strings, so I should have two more over there. But it is so cloudy right now that I'm not getting anything. But I was able to check out all the circuits, so I plugged it into all the connections I have on the inverter, and everything worked out. The polarity's correct on everything, so I should be good to go once, once the sun comes out. Um, it looks like it's going to rain, so that's why I might kind of kill this earlier today. The... Uh, I don't get any cell signal out here, so let me. So I do, however, have data in the car here. So I go to a browser here, go to Windy, and maybe I can check out the forecast here. I actually get a really, really fast connection, and it looks really sharp here. So, and yeah, we'll play the forecast, and we'll see.
All right, I don't see any rain. So at least we're not gonna get rained on, so I don't have to hurry up and pack up, but I also don't see any uh, any significant sunlight coming out, so. This may be it for today. I mean, but it works. Kind of a dud of a day, but I accomplished what I need to needed to, which was to make sure everything works, and everything works, so. I might finish cutting some wire, kind of estimate my lengths, so I get that all spooled up and I don't have to carry this big heavy thing around with me. So yeah, that's it. So my inaugural testing for the solar cannonball run did not go as planned. Uh, I was able to test everything I needed to, but with all the clouds I couldn't really get any power through the system. But uh, look what I did find, a solar powered EV charging station. Let's uh, take a look. So you got two stalls here, got a large solar array, 12 sun power solar panels, 360 watts each. So you got about 4.3 kilowatt. And it's got a large steel base plate here. And then it looks like a hinge here. So this can fold down and then this hinge can fold back. And these side panels also have some kind of hinge where they can fold down. So. I'm guessing it collapses down and goes on the back of a truck. You can plop it down and open it up and start charging. So I think I was charging earlier at 10 amps. I don't know if that's dependent on sun or not, but I was getting 10 amps at 240 volts. And there must be a battery in here, I'm guessing. I'm not sure how big it is, maybe 40 to 60 kilowatt hours, I'd guess. So. Um, not enough to get a full charge on a car, but with the sun supplementing it, uh, you could sit here for a day and charge up a car. So not too bad, but with all the steel it, uh, and structure, it looks kind of expensive. I'm going to guess it would cost 60 grand to drop something like this on a site. But they got top of the line stuff and it looks really cool, so neat. Well, after stacking and restacking the panels in the car a few times, it was really clear that it wasn't going to work as it was, so I went back to the garage after all that and got a bunch of cardboard and put a cardboard sheet between each panel, and that helped it sit sit more level. And then also it let me put uh, plywood on top and the bottom so I could kind of strap it down. So this is the stack with cardboard in between. You can see it stacks much cleaner. There's no bowing, and I've got a protective layer between each of them. I really don't want to scratch or damage the panels. The front side has actually got a pretty thick coating I'm not too worried about. It's the back side of the panel is really thin where the individual Maxion cells are kind of adhered to the back surface. And I really don't want to gouge across the back if I got any kind of debris or rock between panels and then stacked them up like this, I could, I could see some problems. So with a cardboard sheet between each of them, it makes the overall stack a little higher, but I feel a lot more comfortable with just the security of everything. So. I stayed up late last night putting all this together and uh, this is the final result. So I think I'm ready. Um, I'll pack it all in the car tomorrow and hit the road. So thanks for watching.